uh, I do want to introduce um, Marisol Cortez, who uh, my partner, author, scholar, uh, activist. Uh, I met her when I was working as a journalist writing about CPS in 2007, eight. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, and she was working, I think, then with Southwest Workers Union with Deanna uh, as a climate, maybe the first climate justice organizer over there. Um, so uh, she has a new book uh, coming out um, uh, called Loose at Midnight, uh, which is, uh, well, I'll let her introduce it. Um, thank you, Marisol, for, for joining us. Thank you, Greg. Um, can everybody hear me okay? There's an echo. Okay, sorry. I'm going to put some earbuds in. How's that? Can y'all hear me? Okay, good. Uh, well, thank you to Southwest Workers Union, to Sierra Club, and everyone else that's organized this event um, and for making space for, for the arts. Um, in addition to the scientific and the activist knowledge and the political knowledge that we're sharing, um, all of these kinds of knowledges and ways of knowing are going to be critical in, um, in, um, in, in participating in this movement. So thank you. Um, my name is Marisol Cortez, and I, um, I'm, a, I'm a writer, I'm an activist, and uh, a community-based scholar here in San Antonio. And um, I wanted to share with you a couple of excerpts from a novel of mine that uh, Greg mentioned the title is Loose at Midnight, Loose, L-U-Z, like light, um, which is about to be published in December with Flower Song Press. And uh, it's a climate change love story. And it's set here largely in San Antonio in South Texas. I wrote it based on my involvement in different struggles for environmental and climate justice here in this city, particularly around water around nuclear energy, around fracking, um, around land and housing rights. So, I mean, it's very much a love story, but it's also a, a deeply political story about San Antonio environmental history and kind of some of the internal dynamics that I saw and continue to see arise repeatedly across various struggles, you know, the way private influence forecloses public access to the decision-making process about the places where we live. Um, the way climate and other problems get imagined solely as uh, issues that we can solve technologically without paying attention to kind of root causes to political and economic logics that have produced those problems. Um, and, and, you know, the dynamics between us as organizers that can arise that get in the way of our ability to, to do this work. So, you know, the book really kind of asks well, what makes things run? What is power? What is the nature of power? What is the nature of desire? Um, and what is it that produces these same outcomes over and over again? And what do we have to do to disrupt that repetition to create a transition that is truly and actually just? Um, and I think most importantly, do we even have that kind of agency? What is the nature of agency? Who has it? When? Under what conditions? Um, so these are just a couple of passages that I think highlight some of those aspects of the book. Um, and the first is from a chapter called Algo es Algo, something is something. The only bright spots that winter are the city council sessions where Lali sits in the plush auditorium seating of the council chambers with Chela and Naima, keeping an ear cocked for news of the city's legal entanglements with Sizemar. Sometimes checking email, sometimes listening quietly, sometimes snarking in whispers or taking notes. Something is revealing itself, something is coming into view. Lali has not abandoned the student's habit of traveling everywhere with backpacks slung over one shoulder, and in her bag is a spiral notebook where she collects notes and thoughts and even poems, notas, she calls them, feeling form emerge from non-form, the shape of an argument rising in relief against the chaos of observation, something that would explain the how and the why of it, shining a light on what they need to do. These moments of clarity appear between long bouts of boredom, Although sometimes there are moments of levity too. Once Jella burst into the meeting late and unknowingly seated herself one row up from Butch Keller of Keller and Keller, the most powerful developer lobbyist in town and thus the legal representative of Sizemar Explorations LLC. <coughs> that man gets whatever he wants, Sister Soli had warned Jella long ago. 
I should know. I ran for his, I ran against his father for mayor. You see him involved, you know something's up. And now there he was behind unsuspecting Chela. Lali had to rip a ribbon of paper from her spiral and dash a quick note, twisting over the back of her seat to pass it back to Chela. Psst, did you know Keller? from Keller, Keller, and Keller, i.e. KKK, is sitting right behind you? Chella had glanced back sur surreptitiously, pretending to look out the window, then dipped her head to write back. I'll be sure to fart extra hard then. Yeah, it felt good to go to the meetings as gutter punk as possible, braless and menstruating, dirty, stinky chucks with no socks and flapping soles, legs hairy and armpits funky as hell. Then there was the time the representative of a rare earth trade group, the United Rare Earth Association, or Urea, lobbied the council in support of domestic rare earth production. Lali and Chela and Naima had passed Lali's notebook between them, furiously scribbling acronyms for a citizen's lobby that might oppose Urea. The People's Organization of Ore Opposition, PU, Citizens Against Corrupt Assholes, Kaka demonstrating intense, agitated resistance without existing alternatives, diarrhea. And then there was the time they played hangman on a day when they'd been sitting in the council chamber since nine in the morning, waiting for their agenda item to come up. Apparently, it'd been pushed back since Mayor Mike was running late in that morning on a red eye from a Spurs game in Mexico City the night before. Items had gotten pushed back, items had gotten jumbled around. So they waited. And as they waited, they played hangman, heads huddled together. Fuck this shit, was Naima's secret phrase, which Chela easily solved before Stickman hung. Let's get high, was Chela's offering. Lollies had stumped them. Poopity, whoopity, flushity, washity, plop, plop, plop? Chela had whispered slowly as the puzzle finally revealed itself. What's with you and shit, she said, shaking her head. They'd played on, snickering and snorting like middle school malcriadas. And when the mayor arrived with face flushed, he flashed them ojo from his seat at the dais, making the shake even harder with silent laughter, eyes streaming. Today, they have come to the meeting to hear the city attorney update the council on the status of investigations into what Sizemar knew about the cost discrepancy and when they knew it. And so they are caught off guard by the 20 or 30 people who file up the chamber aisle to excoriate the city for voting the previous week to sharply increase their, elect their electric rates. A rate hike last week? Naima gasps. Did y'all hear anything about a 15% rate hike they passed last week? Nah, said Shella. Mm-mm, says Lali. Naima leans forward to fold her arms on the seat in front of her, chin resting on top, as the elder members of Vamos approach the podium one by one. Damn, that's some serious shit in this weather. Shh, oye mama, trying to hear what he's saying, says Chela. The old man at the podium, flanked by a squadron of viejitas, looks worn and disheveled in a rumpled suit that swims on his slight frame, but his voice is firm and practiced. City, power, and light, he is saying. The utility that is supposed to belong to the city, to the people, have the nerve to approach you behind everyone's back for a rate increase? You trust their CEO on this after all the sneaking around on the Sizemore project? What's more, you borrowed a trick from their playbook and actually gave it to them behind everyone's back, and bills are already rising. Just think back to last winter, last summer. We can't even keep our houses livable when it's hot or cold outside. Meanwhile, big companies like Sizemar and the developer of those smokestack condos are getting tax breaks and fee waivers left and right from the city while our homes fall apart from not having the money to fix them. At the very least, you should have waited till you were out of your legal mess. At the bare minimum, you should have had CPL release a line item budget showing what they want all that money for. But we are not asking for the bare minimum. We're telling you no, no rate hike, no means no. And if we have to, we'll recall it. Behind him, the viajitas cheer. Chela stands and emits a wolf whistle. Ah, Chela, mumbles Naima, embarrassed but proud. You want to get us kicked out of here? Chela ignores her. We got to connect with those folks. <sighs> Who, Manuel Martinez, that old brown beret? Naima clucks her tongue. He's okay, I guess, if you like being elbowed out of the way so he can jump in front of the mic. 
everyone knows it's the women in Vamos who do all the work. So then the next, um, the next chapter, little segment that I want to read is um, uh, the character Lali had mentioned, you know, that she's taking these notes, right? She's, she's making these notas as she observes what's happening in the city uh, to make sense of everything. And then this, is, this chapter is one of those notas called instructions. And it's kind of intended to be like, um, it's, it's as though she had done an interview with somebody and then written down the notes as a poem. So it's written in poem format. So notas for instructions. As dictated to me by Doña Maria Elena, la mera, mera vieja vamos, as she pushes us out the door with armfuls of pens and petitions, clipboards and maps. One, first contact. First, you make first contact. This is straightforward. You show up where people go to pay light bills that have gone overdue or to plead disconnection notices. You go there because they'll have rates on the brain already. And you position yourself along an unavoidable line of their exit from the building. Don't bother them as they go in, they're busy. And don't bother asking for official permission. Security's used to us by now anyway. When we first started coming, they tried to shake their brooms at us and we told them, look, the sidewalks belong to everyone so you can't run us off. It's a public space and we belong here. We're the public. Ha, they didn't expect the ajitas to know their rights of public assembly, but we had been trained by the best. That's what the organizer from the Industrial Areas Foundation up north, Chicago, I think he was from, Raul, told us many years ago we should say. Stick to the sidewalks and the public spaces with your ironing boards y todo, and you'll be fine, he said. I guess you know something. Because our other great idea was to make something up. Tell them we're promoting that new program CPL has, the one with the thermometers as if we're estupidas. Of course we are not. We are actually going to the root of the thing, hacia las raíces, all the way down to crank the wrench to stop the thing cold in its tracks. So miquitas. Grab them as they come out of the building. Don't be afraid to approach your own people, to talk unsolicited. I promise you'll be surprised by what you find. I, I promise you'll be surprised by what you learn about what nuestra gente are going through. That's the reason you're there, por gente. So don't be scared. Two, no tiene miedo. Of course, some will say no or brush you off. That's inevitable. Some will be hurrying home to make dinner or take a shower before work, take care of babies or elderly parents. Some just plain aren't interested. That's okay, don't be scared of rejection. And another thing, never ask them if they have a minute or if they want to sign a petition. It's too easy to say no, and besides, the truth is more interesting anyway. Say, you're with a community group and you're fighting the rate hikes council passed and you don't like the way they're transitioning jacking up the rates on los pobres so los ricos can keep their solar powered ACs on full blast all summer so companies like Sizemar can get their fat contracts and get out. They don't mean to, the city, but that's the model. They don't have the imagination to come up with anything better. So what you're doing today is you have a short survey and what you want to know is how much they pay average for lights and gas and how much is that compared to their income. And did they ever get their lights cut? And did they even know the rates went up? Don't ask them if they have a minute. Tell them, it'll just take a minute. You'd be surprised how many people are willing to help. You'd be surprised at how natural and normal it feels to ask your neighbor a question. Three, their lives already connect the dots. Well, here's the thing. The survey is a tool. Sure, we want the information, but really it's to get them thinking on the right track, ¿me entiendes? Because when it comes time to ask if they'll sign, you want them to connect it to their everyday lives. The survey is how you do it. Like when you get to the question about whether they knew the rates went up, most will say no. Can you believe that? And that's when you ask them if they want to sign the petition. See that? That's how it works. Now, some will want to take the sheet home to think it over. They'll say, that never works. You'll never get the thing back. The goal is to get them right there. The goal is to refuse to let them refuse, but without manipulation. No, the goal is to inspire a yes, inflame a desire para animar. That's why they call us animadoras. 
With the survey, you won't need to do explain, no explaining why. No explaining, ha, they'll explain it to themselves. Their own lives will. Four, of course the process isn't fair. Pero here is lo más importante. First, you will need to make sure they're registered voters. If they're not registered, no problem, you sign them up on the spot. We got you deputized, remember? That's why. Second, is they have to sign with the, the address they registered under, not where they currently live. That's where the city tries to trip you. That's where they'll try to throw out signatures. Who the hell remembers where they registered to vote? We've seen it before, decades back, when we were fighting the unfair budget allocations for streets and drainage. They wanted to give this, each district the same amount. It's only fair, they said. Starve the west side for, de for decades, then give everyone the same to fix it? No, ma'am. So we fought it, but that's how we learned how sneaky they are. We got 50,000 signatures, which back then was a lot. 50,000 signatures, which they threw out half saying the people weren't really registered to vote because of the address thing. And whatever little way we tried to maneuver within the system, the system would find a way to block us. If it wasn't throwing out signatures, it was we used the wrong form or we wrote in the wrong color pen. Whatever they had to do, any little gap or crack, they'd wriggle right in and they'd get you. That's how we learn the process isn't fair. I think a lot of us going in believe the system would protect us. That is what we had been taught to believe. When we learned it wasn't like that, our little light bulbs went off. Ding, ding, ding. We lowered our expectations and it was like, okay, so now we know we're gonna have to be sneaky on top of dignified. We're gonna have to do double duty, both inside, outside and in. It's the same now as then, more than 40 years later. Not much has changed, except now it's our own people doing it. Like I said, no imagination, just more of the same, more of the same. Why do you think we're called vamos anyway? We're viejas against more of the same. Thank you. Thank you so much, Marisol. Um, it's beautiful to hear those things and the reality of it, it's, it, it's hit so much to, to close and um, to home and like, yeah, sitting, sitting for hours and hours at City Hall. Yeah, <laughs> everything goes through your mind. <laughs> yep. uh, but you could, you could order um, Loose at Midnight from Flower Song Press. Um, and if there's any links like that, um, feel free to drop them in the, in the chat. Let's give a big um, round of applause to Mari, Marisol Cortez um, for this book. And it's, it's beautiful and hilarious. <laughs> I love it. 